This is episode 001. Welcome fellow anglers to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I am Captain Ryan Van Fleet, your host here in the Florida Keys. Each week I bring you fishing tips, interviews, gear reviews, and more to help you maximize your fishing trip, catch big fish, and overall have fun. This week's podcast is about my least favorite topic, and honestly one that brings me the most anxiety and grief, but is one of the most important, the weather. I tell my clients, weather is the boss. Sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. I wake up at midnight checking my phone for weather updates. Sometimes I think I'm more attached to the weather and the conditions than anything else. It can be consuming. But so much of this relates to the fish I catch, an overall trip experience. And for any of you that fish often, you know this too. So in this episode, I'm going to cover what was it like when I first started fishing the Keys, tools I used and tried, how I advanced and what I use now, and what I would recommend. I remember when I first started fishing down here, we were in what's called a La La Nina, and it was a strong one. In short, a La Nina brings fall and and winter patterns to the southeast that are warmer and drier than normal. The definition on Google is kind of long and has bigger words. We had amazing weather. We had very little rain and wind. When we did have rain and wind, it only lasted a few days. Life was good, and so was the fishing. The La Nina years eventually went away, and then we slipped back into an El Nino, which brought a lot of rain and wind. The wind seemed to last for days in the Florida Keys. That's when I got a true taste of weather. At the time, I was only looking at the NOAA forecast on the computer, but realized I needed to upgrade my phone so I could use it with me at the dock and on trips. And I tried some random wind apps, and I found that they didn't work. And I can't even remember what they were. I don't even think they exist anymore. And to make it worse, the apps only worked at the dock and not on the water, which made my charters difficult. There was one summer the storms kept popping up out of nowhere and were catching everyone by surprise. All of a sudden, we'd be fishing, and the sky would turn black, and the wind would pick up, often a water spout or lightning in the not-too-far distance. It was not fun, as not only was I managing myself in the boat, but also my clients. I would get back to the dock and realize we all got caught in it. At the time, at the time too, I felt like some old-fashioned weatherman. I would see a storm from the distance and try to calculate its movements based on wind, temperature changes, and cloud formations, trying my best to gauge it and avoid issues. When I wasn't fishing, I would spend hours looking at the weather radar tools that were new to the market for predicting storms on the water. I would often stay up all night just studying historical weather patterns, pressure systems, and how they affect oceans all over the world, not just the Keys. Sometimes I felt like I was more obsessed with learning about the weather and the sea conditions than I was about catching fish. I was consumed. First, I tried weatherunderground.com on my computer and maybe an app or two, but I was mainly using marine weather forecast sites that were free. Then, through some digging and research, I found Wind Alert and Wind Finder. I have been using both of those in conjunction for what I would say over three years. The variable is that I use windalert.com on my phone and the app on my iPad, and believe it or not, the two vary. I also use windfinder.com on my iPad and phone. This is how I forecast the weather, and it works for me. I start forecasting three to five days out, up until three hours before the charter. Using windalert.com on my cell phone usually calls for higher winds, but the windalert app on my iPad usually calls for more accurate hourly wind predictions. 
two of the three of these will correlate. Then I go with those predictions for my charter. If you have never used Wind Alert or Wind Finder, they are both fairly easy to use and are both global. Wind Finder is free. With Wind Alert, some areas may charge for usage, but some areas are free. It just depends. They are easy because once you sign up, you can search with your zip code and start honing in on your fishing area. What's really important to know is when the lows or the fronts are coming. This helps you get your fishing in. Typically, before a low, you get two days without a lot of wind. On occasion, it can even be flat calm. But the predictions often don't call for it until the last minute, so you just have to be aware. I do my absolute best when predicting the wind. 80 to 90% of the time, I am right which in my opinion is pretty good, but I've studied a lot and really pay attention. When in doubt, I don't go. The final piece of the puzzle, at least at this point in time, is the Garmin Sirius Weather Radar Antenna, the GXM53. Being that the weather has gotten more difficult and affecting my business so much, I saved my money and I purchased the system. I'm so glad I did. It costs $649.95. I bought it through the gpsstore.com. I already had a serious subscription on my boat for music, so I added on a marine weather package, which costs $54.99 a month. Tracking storms on the water with this unit is awesome. It is a great product. I will not leave the dock without it functioning. My mechanic helped and did the install which I would also recommend if you are not handy. I'm definitely not handy with mechanical. I will cover more about this unit in an upcoming gear review podcast. All this brings me to present day. The weather still sucks. It has actually gotten worse. If I am on the water and see it's getting ugly, I run around it or I run home. I am now very good at predicting the wind and sea conditions so my boat can safely safely fish either outside the reef or inside the reef. Well, thanks for tuning in today. I hope this podcast was helpful. Just remember, you will get your bad weather days as well as your good weather days. And I am sure there is a lot more I can cover on this topic. My final advice is don't push it or or let your emotions drive you into something you should not do. Safety is always first. If you enjoyed my podcast or have any feedback, I would like to hear from you. So please share your comments or suggestions on my Facebook page, which is Good Karma Fishing Charters. Or you can check out my website, goodkarmasportfishing.com, and sign up for the monthly newsletter. Or email me at goodkarmaryan at gmail.com. Most important, just remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good.